that helps uh, some of you guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and tune in. And let's see what happens if this works or if we got to frag it off. Thanks for watching. So a gentleman named Chris, who has been experimenting with witch hazel and other things for brown jelly, said that witch hazel definitely does help, uh, especially as an overall tank treatment. But since they're in quarantine right now, to go ahead and give them a dip. Right now, uh, the issue again is with that brown stuff that is forming. He said that, you know, put it under a microscope and it does not look at all like brown jelly. Uh, actually, it just, does it look like diatoms or anything? He said it's just the cleanup crew, uh, bacterial cleanup crew, and it's fine, but just keep blowing it off. Put a second power head in there, and that prevented a lot of that from growing in there continuously. He recommended using the Furin 2. So we're doing a couple of packets in one gallon for about an hour, and uh, we'll see how well that works. You know, he said just keep blowing it off with a turkey baster, and then put it back in and see what happens. You know, he said that the corals the good sign will be when they start coming out again. But the Ghanis always come out. They don't stay retracted like this. They're retracted like this right now because they're pretty pissed off at me for taking them out. But otherwise, they always stay in there. Uh, when they were on the display tank, I didn't even know that they had the brown jelly until at night when I had to move them around to keep the clowns away from them and I saw that this was going on. So they are not getting too pissed off about all this. But anyway, we'll do an hour dip. Uh, he said even maybe two hours at the most, and we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to go get my actual lights in here, but let's take a look and see what we've got going on. So you can see that I've cleaned that up there. That's been all cleaned, and now it's in uh, salt, you know, in salt water. I'm using my Penplex Cascade 300. How many power heads available? I couldn't find any locally right now. So Rod said actually this one should do just fine. There's the original media and I put some bio balls in there which the bacteria should grow in there fairly quickly and yeah we'll see how well this stays now the idea is to just basically you know take a photo of it so I'm gonna have it almost like right here and every single day we're just gonna compare it and hopefully it's not receding now if this recedes any further then yeah we're gonna get it cut I've got my SB reef one of the bars hung over it and uh, let this be a lesson that if you have clownfish, uh, you know, honestly, they say they don't need an anemone, but in my opinion, get one. Maybe the first thing you should put in your tank is an anemone so that we don't have to worry about them, you know, moving around. You can see where it gets situated, but I have mine in a nice little container and he's staying still. I, I just added him a couple weeks ago. But the reason I say that is because after a while, you know, and my clowns are tank race apparently and even then instincts still kick in and he was hosting this one and i went over to host this one and then he hosted this one again so somewhere along the lines the clown decided to or the clown accidentally spread the brown jelly disease now maybe it didn't come from either ones maybe this came from the other coral that i got the encrusting ganiopora the one that got wiped out almost instantly maybe the clown brushed by it and then it spread to these guys this guy's fragged. The ball size green gani has not been fragged yet because I it doesn't look like it's getting any worse. So now we're gonna do three quarantines. So we're gonna do one quarantine for the ball gani and the aliopora, one for the blue gani, and then one for all these frags. Let's see if maybe we can save the frags. So we are now, I think on like day six or seven of the brown jelly situation. Now, if we take a look here, you can see that that's really not getting any worse at all. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on it, and if it doesn't spread any worse, I think he's ready to go back. Um, there is a little bit of brown stuff around it that grows in there, but that's a cleanup crew of bacteria, not brown jelly. Now, if we take a look over here, you can definitely see that uh, brown jelly is pretty much overtaking this and you can see the spots in between, but during the day, it's pretty alive. I'm not gonna stick my hands in there, I gotta thoroughly wash them off, but if you take a look here, I did just lift them up earlier because I wanted the polyps to go back in. Kinda wanna piss them off a little bit. Uh, but you can see that the blue gani 
that Rod had fragged for me over at Coral Bargain Warehouse. You can see a nice clean cut that he did. He very carefully looked at the coral to make sure. Hold on a second, there we go. He uh, very carefully made sure that he cut out any bad parts. So he actually went pretty deep in because when he cut into the skeleton, there was a little bit more brown than there should have been. So he said better to be safe than sorry. And I'm glad he did because it's been now multiple days. I just left it alone. There is this part here. And I don't know if maybe that's something that needs to be fragged or looked at. Yeah, that looks dead. Whereas that wasn't dead before. So that could be telling me that uh, the brown jelly is still there or the bacteria is still there rather. Well, today's the second day. And we can see that it's still those five dead polyps. Nothing else has really died. Now you've got these guys right here, but that's because I just blasted to see if there was any uh, jelly in there and nothing flew off. Even more exciting, these guys right here, I'm sorry about the glare and the salt creep here, but even more exciting is that these guys right here, nothing came out. So it looks like Friday not only did the trick, but the dip with the furin two. So let's look over here so you guys know what I'm talking about. Right here, nitrofurin two, that really worked. And the witch hazel dip was the final nail in the coffin for the brown jelly disease. Okay, so this guy was doing great until the last few days. It just looks like the brown algae is coming back once again, excuse me. It looks like the brown jelly is coming back once again. To be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and try something new. So since my 40 gallon tank doesn't really have any coral in it that could be susceptible to the brown jelly, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off. I don't have a bandsaw, I don't have access to one. This is a goner as far as I'm concerned. So doing this with the Dremel uh, shouldn't be too bad. I'm just gonna cut everything around here uh, and we'll do one more dip, put it in the tank, and if it lives, great, it lives. If it dies, well, we gave it a good old college try for this one. And let's see what happens. So you can see there's, you know, where the skeleton is, but this one has great coverage all the way around. This one, you can't even tell the part of the skeleton is dying. So it's been about a week or two since, uh, you know, we've talked about this and uh, the other small pieces, they, they just died out. But it let me see the difference between what brown jelly actually is, because you could literally see like a light brown, not a dark brown. There was a light brown. It was bubbling up over the whole coral. I wish I had gotten video of it. And the moment that you blew it away, all the polyps, everything just died off or came flying off. But these are doing great. So let's wait till tonight and let's see what these look like. But if so, I think we're back to normal. So, so this is the final update here. Uh, these are at least what I could try to draw on the dots on here and it was rather difficult or the dead polyps or the dots. And then I'm like, you know, that's too much work. So I started doing it where these were the ones that originally glued and then uh, we put glue on them and then these were the ones that were dead around it and in about four or five days you know I, granted i did this back in the six but it's been like that for quite some time so this hasn't died any worse than it already is this one on the other hand is about the same now if you look here on march 29 it all looks like there was three or four you know about five of them and then it went to nine nine and nine and it's obviously been the same nine. So maybe I'm not sure if those were already dead. You can barely tell anything is dead right now because this is all covered. But once these polyps retract, then you can see the additional ones that are dead. There's a little bit of brown. It almost looks like the brown jelly. It looks dark brown, but it's almost like a light brown. It's been in that center one for quite some time. I don't think it's brown jelly, however, because if it was, it's been there for about three days now, this would all be dead all around it. So what I think it is,
What I think it is is just algae and cleanup crew bacteria. I don't think that's brown jelly. I've taken samples out of that and there's no flagellates or any bacteria movement at all. It just looks like straight up algae. So does this mean that the brown jelly disease was cured? It looks like it. Now, not a lot is really known about brown jelly and a lot of people argue about what it is. You know, is it what's actually killing the coral or is it a symptom of something else killing it? Well, obviously we saw bacteria earlier in the video. It's there. That bacteria is obviously killing the coral and that's creating some sort of brown jelly. Now, whether it's the death of the coral itself or the bacteria making it, my personal guess, it is the bacteria making that jelly and it's pretty much eating the coral. That's why when I blew off that brown jelly, you could just see the polyps pretty much go away with it. But this is looking really good. And hopefully this is a sign of, you know, good luck for everybody. If you have a round gone pour like this, that's gonna suck to frag, just honestly. I was really wanting not to frag that one. And eventually I might take it out and just glue the rest of those polyps, but the glue might also be what's killing the polyp. So I'm gonna leave it be and if it doesn't get worse, great. And there seems to be growth that's now starting over. If you have one like this, where it's just one long one that's not fully round, just cut the edges off and waste no time, cut them and isolate every single coral. The Malefix did help. I think the Malefix honestly helped not only just clean it out, but get rid of any critters or anything in there that could be agitating it. The last thing that we really want if there's brown jelly is anything that's agitating it. Uh, the furin, definitely a big help. And even a dip with a uh, heavy on the dip with iodine. I don't think that the traditional coral dips really did anything, uh, but I would say the Malefix, the furin, and the iodine and putting the witch hazel in the quarantine tank was a big help. I think keeping that witch hazel in the tank prevented the bacteria from growing back in there. And when you have it in the quarantine tank, put a heavy power head in there. You want a lot of that movement. It just prevents that from settling on the tank and settling it to the other side. I did keep these raised up, so I had them on a Tupperware container, and that way all, if there was any brown jelly, any bacteria, as soon as it blew off, it settled to the bottom of the tank and not on the coral itself. I really hope this helps somebody. I could not find a lot of information out there. What info I did find was a lot of conflicting information. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you have any questions, comment, etc. I am by no means an expert on brown jelly, but at this point, I don't really think anybody is. Thanks for watching. Good night and God bless.